So IIR comb filters are often used to emulate high order room reflections and the reason being is because they're recursive because there's a feedback element into the filter we get a time domain impulse response as we can see here so as we change the IR comb filter coefficients we can expand out this infinite impulse response if you like in the frequency domain if we examine it we see this this comb effect so this repeating of these peaks in the frequency domain now often what we do is combine a number of IR comb filters with different uh, orders and coefficient values to effectively get uh, if we add them all together we can essentially get a flat frequency response or as flat as we can and a very long time domain response now we can build ir combs very easily within matlab we can do it as follows we make a b coefficient equal one uh, delay in this case is zero so the a coefficients are going to be equal to uh, one and then the uh, the zeros if you like they get inserted here and minus this gain coefficient as i change the value of delay i can make a, a longer and longer delay term that gets multiplied by this minus g coefficient in the in the stream now if we go back to the uh ir comb if we look at this response it's effectively uniform right well not uniform but it's, it's essentially repeating all the way up to the nyquist rate i.e the higher frequency ranges now if we want this to emulate a room then we want the higher frequencies to be attenuated in some way so we want this to be low pass filtered so it'd be nice if this had a, a very similar sort of decay um, that it had as you can see in the uh, the time domain and the way we can do that is by combining it like this so this is the difference uh, or, the, or the structure of the ir comb where we've got the feedback and this minus k is the, that delay term that we saw earlier um, so we're going to insert a low pass filter into this feedback network and this is going to emulate the absorption characteristics of the room so we can we can uh, have control both over the the um, the decay length of the filter itself and also the absorption characteristics by modifying the characteristics of this filter just for completeness if we expand this out it starts to look something like this where we have this being our uh, low pass filter and this being our uh, ir comb if you like so this is a low passed comb so where do we start with designing this well this Here's some uh, quick um, RC equivalent circuit. Um, so this is a, an RC network that's modeled in, in MATLAB. This gives us the essentially a normalized uh, frequency response. So um, what do we mean by that? Well, we've got this here is essentially the frequency cutoff divided by the sample rate of the system. Now, this value can go anywhere between 0 up to 0 0.5 can only go up to 0.5 because we're, we can only go up to uh, this point here which is the nyquist frequency but anyway if you tap all these um, values in you'll get a feed forward coefficient and a um, feedback coefficient as follows and then you model your your low pass response the transfer function for that low pass filter can be derived and it's derived as follows so we've got the uh, feed forward coefficient here i've just labeled it b low pass zero so you can you can we can differentiate between the b coefficients of the low pass filter and the b coefficients of the ir comb so this is B low pass zero divided by one minus, and this is A low pass, and it's a single delay term, hence this, this minus one. And the general uh, IR comb transfer function um, is given as follows, with this minus K being the, the delay term, and you'll see there's just this uh, single feedback term. Um, how do we combine those two? Well, first of all, we start off with the general equation for the IR comb, and what we've got to think about is this feedback term is going to be multiplied by the low pass filter function so if we do that then what we get is this so this is just the transfer function of the low pass which I'm, i haven't, haven't expanded that out yet i'll do that next but this is just to show you the, the entire process so we're multiplying the transfer function of the low pass filter with the uh, gain coefficients and the um, feedback term in the first instance so that then we're going to expand out and we're starting to get some, uh, some, some. I wouldn't say messy algebra, but algebra that we need to try and simp uh, simplify and solve. So what can we do? Well, it would be nice if we got rid of this term here. And the way we can start to do that is by thinking, you know, if we if we took this term and we somehow represented this one with this term, then we can start to multiply through and, and get rid of that term altogether. So that's exactly what we are going to do. And we do it as follows. So this, if you think about it, this here is actually just equal to one so nothing's changed but um, in fact we've, we, we may have thought oh we've made it a little bit harder to understand but if you think what we can do now we can actually uh, multiply through by the term so if we multiply through by the one minus the alp z minus one then we ended up end up with this final uh, equation here and this is actually the uh, equation the transfer function for the low pass ir comb filter so if you were to pop this into your matlab systems 
and run an analysis on it, then you'd see something like this. So we, we have a comb response and we have this uh, uh, low pass kind of roll off here, which is pretty cool.